It is a land of towering ice and blinding snow called Greenland. Legend has it that Viking explorers called it green to fool settlers into coming here. But 500 years after the Vikings abandoned it, southern Greenland really is turning greener. Since the mid-90s, the average temperature has risen by nearly two degrees and the ice is melting. The Greenland ice sheet is losing mass now and that's not just important for Greenland, that's important for all of us because it's the, the global sea level that's, that's changing with that. What may be bad for the planet is turning out to be great for Greenland. Warmer seas are bringing huge catches of cod. Farmers are enjoying early springs and growing seasons up to a month longer. Cattle are being farmed for the first time since the Vikings. Sophus Fredrickson introduced Greenland's first herd three years ago, a mere 16 cows and bulls. But he has visions of becoming a cattle baron if the temperature keeps rising. Greenland is a vast island that's almost completely covered by an ice cap. Fewer than 60,000 people live here, clinging precariously to a narrow coastal strip. It's as far north as people have been able to farm, enduring freezing winters and late springs for a few short, warmer months. To many scientists, Greenland is ground zero of global warming a marker of the kind of changes that will eventually sweep the planet with potentially catastrophic results. Many skeptics argue the proof isn't there that it's man-made, that it's anything more than the cyclical changes of nature. But whatever the cause, Greenland does show that a change of just a couple of degrees can fundamentally affect entire communities. Kenneth Herg is an agricultural economist and an advisor to the Greenland government, which enjoys autonomous rule under its old colonial power, Denmark. He spends much of his time travelling around South Greenland, trying to help farmers adapt to the changes. So, Kenneth, you can't get anywhere by road here. That's right. All the settlements is like small islands. Mm -hmm even though that they're connected by land, but there's no roads in between them. So everywhere by boat? Yeah, all transportation uh, by boat or by air. In summer, the sun shines for almost 20 hours a day. So the slight rise in temperature has meant a big rise in productivity. Instead of 10 tonnes per hectare of potatoes, you might be able to harvest 15 tonnes now. It's very nice <laughs> for us now that we are getting more and more sure that this tendency that we have seen in the next uh, in the last 10 to 12 years seems to be lasting but it's getting harder to reach the farms as the fjords fill with giant icebergs the warmer temperature means more ice is cracking off the glaciers yeah yeah uh, sure do I do? 
Malah kerap tak um, lagi si Yunus kita juga ni ada menit. Okay, pasal aku ya ya. Kamu dia shoot. Yes, ini lah. Eventually, we make it through to Ferdinand Egeder's farm. Like Kenneth Herg, he's descended from both Danish colonists and indigenous Inuit. But these days, they're all Greenlanders. It's a stunning location. But for generations, all they could farm here were these tough sheep that thrive on the harsh landscape. Since the weather started warming in the 90s, they've been able to expand into commercial crops. And they're doing very nicely. Now they are willing to grow turnips and potatoes commercially. And it used to be only for the farm, and now they are willing to invest a lot of money into uh, grow them commercially on a larger scale. But farmer Egede isn't completely happy. In this land of frozen water, there's a new problem, lack of rain. Even so, Egid is sceptical about all this talk of global warming. With increasing levels of greenhouse gases, temperature will increase. And I think at least 95% of all the climate scientists that work with this will agree with me. This is something I think is quite well known. So you have no doubt that the warming of Greenland is at least in part a product of man-made greenhouse gases? Yes, I have no doubt there. Professor Dorte Dahl Jensen is one of Denmark's leading climate scientists. She's spent 26 years extracting cores from Greenland's ice cap. The ice cores, kept in this cool room at the University of Copenhagen, are the source of much of the world's knowledge of climate change. We always try to keep part of the ice core for the future. And how old is that ice? Well, the ice here is 100,000 years old. Uh, 100,000 years old? Yeah. The ice from that period can tell us tales about how it was at that time when it was warmer over Greenland. And of course, that's what we're interesting to know so we can make better predictions of what's going to happen with the warming that we expect in the future. Greenlanders have been through massive change before. The weather was even warmer in the early Middle Ages when Vikings first settled on the south coast. But in the 14th century, Greenland experienced a mini ice age. No one knows for certain what happened, but many speculate the Vikings failed to adapt to changed conditions. Everywhere we travelled, we saw evidence of their abandoned farms. Now Viking land is being farmed again. At this experimental station, Kenneth Herg and his colleagues are successfully growing vegetables that were once unthinkable so far north. We are testing new things that we probably would have hesitated a little bit to test in the past like broccoli, like, uh, uh, like different types of cabbage. But it's they're growing fine. now? They are, they're growing fine, yes. For the first time, Greenlanders have the prospect of fresh milk and vegetables, and there's even talk of exporting their organic produce. Bit of an irony there, isn't there, if you've got an export market for organic meat that's as a result of global warming? Yeah, you could say so, but there's always something good that comes out of something bad. We are right on the limit of agricultural production. We are next to the Arctic desert, to the cold desert. And the cold desert is retreating, and that's good for us. 
But as a citizen of planet Earth, do you worry about some of the potential effects elsewhere of global warming? Yes, I know very well what you think about. I hope that this greenhouse effect won't run out of control totally. But just a little bit of extra warmth that would be good for us. Stefan Magnusson is one farmer who's troubled by what he's seeing. With so little snow these days, Magnusson's finding it hard to get to the reindeer he farms for export meat. The temperature is uh, significantly warmer than it used to be uh, 10, 12 years ago. We used to have three stable months of snowmobile conditions, but now we can barely get three weeks. So what are you going to do? Uh, I don't know, maybe lay down and uh, put my four feet in the air or... <laughs> no. <laughs> His farmhouse is just a few kilometres walk and several million mosquitoes from the edge of the ice cap. Three years ago we saw a new river coming from underneath the uh, ice. All right. And the melting is uh, going through the crevices and I think there's a huge lake underneath the ice cap. Uh -huh. Just... Uh, over there yonder. He took us there to show just how much the temperature rise has altered the landscape. That's where the uh, glacier was 10 years ago. That was all ice? Yes, all ice. So this is Still a new perfect. river? This is a brand new river here. OK. So how far has it gone back in the past 10 years? Uh, from here to there is uh, close to 100 metres. 100 metres? Yes, yeah. about 100 metres. And even further down there? And down there is uh, even more. Close to 200 metres has been melted away. Wow. The 140,000 hectare leasehold supports 2,000 reindeer. But the warming climate is now threatening to put him out of business. Ten years ago, he could round up his herd by snowmobile. Now he has to do it by helicopter, and it's devouring his profits. So, Stefan, how do you know where the reindeer are? Well, their natural habit when we have a warm weather like this on a warm day, then uh, they uh, like to go up to the glacier to cool off, to get away from the mosquitoes and all the bugs and they stay there mostly uh, during the day and then in the evening they will go down back onto the Greenland for the pasture. Magnusson, who's originally from Iceland and speaks six languages, takes obvious pride in his adopted home. Yes, it's just fantastic. Yeah, I live in a great place. I think I live in the greatest, one of the greatest places on the planet. charts. This uh, lake uh, here did not exist in 1952. It's unbelievable. Nothing that is on the old map that is uh, based on uh, a aerial photographs taken in 1953. Nothing on the map makes sense where the edge of the ice is. There are new lakes that are formed and the ice has retreated several hundred meters in some areas. The global warming and uh, the climate change uh, is a fact. You, you, can, you have the fact, physical fact right here in front of your eyes. Yeah, In the roundup season, it would take him five hours of flying time to get them back to the holding pen. We're gonna try to make them swim. While Magnuson's own problems are his immediate concern, it's the retreat of the ice cap that worries him most. 
It covers 80% of Greenland's interior. At its highest point, it's more than three kilometres thick. But the view from the air is disturbing. Well, this used to all this land that you're seeing here used to be covered up with ice 10 years ago. Really? Oh, yes. A year ago, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change estimated that melting ice could raise sea levels by 20 centimetres over the next 50 years. But the latest research from Greenland suggests it could be far worse. The melt is speeding up as newly formed streams push out ever more ice. You might even double it, so you're up 40, 50 centimetres of sea level change during the next 50 years. And that's quite serious. This will affect a lot of people that are living close to the ocean. So the speed of the melt is actually increasing? Yes, that's right. And uh, we would never have believed that just 10 years ago. Stefan Magnusson isn't about to let that spoil his dinner which tonight is one of his reindeer. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Reindeer roast. <laughs> this hard-headed businessman can see the potential benefits for people living in the subarctic. Oh, we will just have to observe this and, and how far it is going to go and, uh, and try to live with it. So I have to adapt. Mm. I am a fan for it because the, the next generation is going to benefit from it. I'm not going to benefit from it. But the next generation is going to benefit, at least the generation living in the, around the Arctic Circle. So you've got to try to uh, see the positive in the negatives. But he also believes the world owes it to those future generations to find out why Greenland is warming. I think we have to invest more money in science to monitor for this. And we are already using uh, billions of, of dollars on, on warfare. So why not, uh, why not uh, reverse this a little bit and, and uh, put some more money into science to make this climate a better place to be? It's a curious place to be experiencing rising temperatures and one of the few nations that could genuinely benefit from global warming. But it could also teach the world invaluable lessons about what's really happening to the weather and how we might all have to adapt if much more of Greenland turns green.